But today it is serious hoops. SIU at Illinois State. The Salukis beat the Redbirds last month with guard Paul Lusk. And forward Marcus Timmons leading the way in a three-point win at Carbondale. But here in normal, first-year head coach Kevin Stallings has engineered a seven-game win streak. And senior Thomas Hunter has taken over. We welcome you to the home of the Redbirds, Redbird Arena in Normal, Illinois. This is one they've been looking forward to for a long time as the Salukis of SIU come visiting from Carbondale. Neither of these teams atop the Missouri Valley right now with a narrow overtime win over Creighton last night. Tulsa goes 14-3. They've got a line on the title. But a lot at stake here today emotionally for these two. Bob Carpenter, Terry Holland, we welcome you to normal. Terry, a couple of ball clubs, Red Hot. They've won 11 straight between them. And for the visitors, they can get it done inside or outside. Well, you know, the one thing they've done is they've played their best basketball at this time of the year. Southern Illinois, the winner of four straight, seven in a row for Illinois State. Both of these teams are ready for the end of the season. And as far as that combination of Lusk and Timmons, I'm not sure any team in the Missouri Valley can quite match the individual talents of these two. Well, Paul Lusk scores from the outside, and of course they've got Marcus Timmons inside. Timmons is a great rebounder in addition to his shot blocking ability around the basket, and Lusk is always looking for him. Anytime he gets a basketball close to the basket, he can finish strong. Bob Bender left Illinois State for Washington. Kevin Stallings is here after working for Gene Cady at Purdue. Roy Williams at Kansas, and they're playing some Kansas-like defense here late in the season. They play great defense. They've been holding teams under 40% from the floor. When you do that, you've got a great chance to win, and of course, you've got to score points, and the man who's doing that for him, Thomas Hunter, is playing extremely well in the paint. He's only 6'6", but he takes up a lot of space in there. He's shooting 60% for the year, but lately been shooting 70% from the floor. A couple of teams red hot down the stretch. That'll make things very interesting in the Valley Tournament coming up in St. Louis. SIU and ISU coming up. Up at the half, but right now it's our game, and we go to Redburn Arena. 10,000 plus on hand will be screaming for the home team. Southern Illinois hopes to put a muzzle on that kind of noise pretty quick. It's the Redbirds and Salukis up next on ESPN. ESPN's exclusive coverage of NCAA basketball is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Big emotional ball game here at home for Illinois State. SIU's 80th year of basketball, their 20th in the Missouri Valley. And one of the guys they depend on is their 5'10 senior point guard, Chris Lowry. A three-year starter, he's over the hamstring problems that bothered him early in the season. And a relatively young man at the age of 60, his ninth-year head coach, Rich Heron, who coached in the high school ranks in the state of Illinois for many, many years and won 616 games. He's won 160 in Carbondale. Mike Vandegaard, a senior, 6'8", 210, out of Bloomington, Minnesota, gets the start as one of those starting seniors for Kevin Stallings today. Stallings, a Purdue graduate back in 82. He's the sixth youngest head coach in Division I. And he has definitely brought some of that Gene Cady, Roy Williams influence with him here to Normal, Illinois. SIU has the opening tap, and Chris Lowry gets their offense going. They're second in the league in scoring to the first place Hurricane of Tulsa. That's Lusk on the right side with a good dribble drive and a nice pull up. Oh, good job by Lusk, just taking it down to his shooting range and then elevating over the defender. And a quick turnover by the Redbirds. A backcourt trap. Ron Zetcher says Illinois State will keep it. He works on the crew today with Willie Sanchez and Rick Wolko. Both teams will open in a man-to-man, -man, but I think we'll see a changing defenses throughout the course of the game, depending on how the man-to-man -man is going. Mirko Pavlovich out on top for SIU. 
Lust, the kind of guy who can create his own shots. There he created one for Lowry. And he says, why shoot the three when I can take it in for the two? Usually that lane closes a little quicker than that. I'm sure that Kevin Stallman is not very pleased with that defense. And a foul away from the ball, down low. And you can see that Chris Lowry is wide open, as you say, for the three. Usually, when you don't take the three, you end up taking yourself into trouble at his size. And he ends up with a layup out of that. Charles Barnes, a senior who doesn't normally start, missing that one from the right side off the inbounds play. After the foul by Pavlovich. And that time, Don Lowe, the man that Terry Holland talked about in the open, Thomas Hunter. Now you can see he's only 6'6". He gives away a couple of inches to Pavlovich down there, but he takes up a lot of space, and he's a very physical player. That time they got him for using his body. And there's an offensive foul. Paul Lusk was in on the action, and so is Mirko Pavlovich, and that'll be a couple of quick ones on him. Good job by Michael Vandergaard to come over to draw the charge there. Good help from the backside of the floor. And although he does not usually start, he is the leading scorer for this team. So he's certainly a player that is on the floor a great number of minutes during the course of a game. Well, he was fouling out so often early in the season. They decided to bring him in off the bench. He's been outstanding. His look inside was forced. And a good steal there by Mirko Pavlovich. Southern Illinois, 4-0, we're a minute 45 in. Carr pulling up, dumping it down deep. Marcus Timmons, the intended receiver, and good help defense by the Redbirds. Southern Illinois has four starters in double figures, and Chris Lowry just outside double figures at 9.6, so they've got a lot of different offensive weapons to throw at you. Lusk. Well, long on the three. Timmons, good position on the back door, but he jumped a little bit too early. Vandegaard inside. Strong rebound, Charles Barnes. Well, Bob, one of the things that Kevin Stallings told us he was worried about was rebounding, particularly against this Southern Illinois team that does such a great job on their offensive board. So I know he's very pleased to be able to get to his own offensive glass this early in the game. Left wing, it was gambling for the steal. Thomas Hunter. And then Pavlovich knocks it down in good fashion. SIU looking good offensively so far. Well, when you've got a center that can move around like Pavlovich can, he can actually go outside and shoot the three-pointer. He's made 15 of those this year, although that was a two-pointer. You see his mobility, and that pulls your big man away from the basket. Turn around for Hunter. And Thomas rattles it home. That's his first basket. And the Redbirds have scored a couple of times down the floor now, and it's 6-4 Southern Illinois. with penetration, the quick jumper. How quick was that release? And Southern Illinois likes to play quick, and Paul Lusk had the chance to penetrate there and pulled up and took the jumper. Vandegaard backing in. Couldn't hit it over the top of Timmons, and the Redbirds will have it back. Both teams like to play at a fairly fast pace, but I would think that Illinois State would want this game played in the low 70s. Southern Illinois would like to play it in the 80s if they possibly could, or the high 70s. Timmons sloughing off Hunter out top there. And Barnes well along with that one, and the rebound came way out. Scott Taylor with some penetration. Saluki's thought he traveled, but he drew a foul. Well, even though they haven't scored a lot of points, there's been a lot of action so far, Bob, and I would think that this pace tends to favor Southern Illinois at this particular point. Todd Glenhater. Going the ball in Illinois State's two guard. Hunter looking for him out top. Steady goes left wing. There's Taylor to Glenhater. Well short on the three, Vandergaard with a strong rebound and the turnaround. It was Taylor keeping it alive momentarily. Now Lowry for Lusk, 
And Paul Lusk is on fire early. He's a 43% three-point shooter, and he's got three twos to start off this game. Taylor cannot answer for ISU. They've had some stretches this year when they've had trouble scoring. They trail 10-4. Lusk again. Good rebounding position for Vandegaard. He will outlet in a hurry for Wemhaden. And again, the pace and the way the shots are coming are probably a little bit too quick for what Kevin Stalins particularly wants at this time. Four minutes and 21 seconds into the first half. SIU off to a good start. It's Lusk with six, and that's how much they lead by. Paul Lusk of Southern Illinois has taken five shots already. He's knocked down three of them. Well, when you get good shots on the break like this, you're going to have great scoring opportunities. And this is a good decision here to pull up and shoot the jumper. Even though it's a two-on-one, you want to make sure you get a shot. The defense was in good position. Paul Lusk pulling up and making the jumper there, getting the ball on the glass for his team. Thompson, the league and field goal percentage are the Salukis. They shoot 37% from three-point range. And they're off to a good start at five out of seven. SIU turns it, rather ISU turns it over again. Northern Iowa and Bradley second in the league at 47%. Tulsa right behind. Four and a half minutes in. The visitors have it their way so far. Pavlovich with a couple of different moves and good patience to get a second field goal. Yeah, he got he got Thomas Hunter up in the air there and just waited till he came down. And of course, there was nothing Hunter could do then except try to foul him, and he elected not to smile and foul him a good, smart defensive play there. Now David Kaysen in running the Illinois State offense. Outstanding junior point guard out of Baltimore. Marku Larkio is out there as well, a sharpshooter out of Finland. He's got it left wing. Well, long with it. Skying for the rebound was Vandergaard, but he couldn't quite get up there. Lowry, good entry. Pavlovich unable to hit it. Wem Hayner ahead to Kaysen. Vandergaard, he's got the three. And that basket was created by David Kaysen's penetration, and that's what he was recruited to do for this team, to give them some additional quickness. He leads the Missouri Valley Conference in assist, and you see why. Vandegaard shooting 71% his last six ball games. Nice look down to the baseline, but it's an offensive foul for Chris Lowry. Down on the floor, taking the charge was Thomas Hunter. And again, a great play by Thomas Hunter to move over to close that lane. They didn't do it the first time Chris Lowry had the basketball, but this time they were ready to react to his penetration. Only one team foul on Illinois State. That was number four already on SIU. Pavlovich playing with two early ones. Wemhainer. Entry pass. Ryan Kern took a look around. Now they swing it around to the other side. Underneath Lipweiler trying to roll it home. And he just couldn't sneak it over the iron. But that was a good quick move, and he's not intimidated. He's only 6'6", and he doesn't look that strong, but he takes it to the basket hard. Pavlovich against Kern scores and draws the foul. Well, you get the feeling that Pavlovich thinks that he can score against anybody today. Thomas Hunter was having trouble guarding him earlier. You saw him get him up in the air. This time, he takes Brian Kern right to the basket. Nice hook shot here. He gets the position, takes care of the basketball, and then protects it with his body. The old hook shot back across the middle. It's very difficult to defend unless you help down from the outside. Pavlovich coming off a 21-point effort the other night at Northern Iowa. That was a crazy game that SIU led by nine with a minute to go. 20 points were scored in the last minute, and they held on for a three-point lead. And that's been a tough place for anybody in the Valley to win this year, and that was a great win for them. They thought they had it locked up, and as you say, 20 points scored, 13 points scored by Northern Iowa in the last 42 seconds, if you can imagine that. Chris Carr will take his seat. Scott Brzezinski, a sophomore swingman, has checked in. And 
Patrick Stewart keeping it alive. Well, both coaches use their benches freely, but Southern Illinois starters stay on the floor far more minutes than the Illinois State starters. So the Salukis by seven. Webb Hader down to Kern. His jump hook goes in, and he's fouled by Marcelo De Silva. De Silva's a senior from Brazil, and he had an outstanding game earlier. He had 20 points in a game, but this time Kern takes it right to him. He's going to play behind. He lets him have the basketball. A good job by Kern of taking up the space. And again, we see the little jump hook there. Not quite the classic sweeping hook, but the jump hook from Kern. Well, he's got his season average on one play. A big three-pointer by their junior center. And it's a 14-10 lead for SIU. As Lusk. Quick on the transition, gets it to Timmons. And a foul down there. And Illinois State doing a good job of picking up full court, but they couldn't get back quickly enough because a great job by Southern Illinois putting their two scores at the far end of the floor. And when it was advanced, who was it down there in the two-on-one situation? Paul Lusk and Marcus Timmons. And you're not going to win that battle very often. John Littwaller on the foul. Marquio picks up the loose ball. Top for Larkio, tough D out there by Ian Stewart. Shot clock down to 15, and Kevin Stalling says when the shot clock gets down low, we are in trouble sometimes. Have not been that good at scoring late in the 35 seconds, but there's De Silva on the back for his second foul on another feed into Brian Kern. And that ends up bailing out Illinois State because, as you say, the shot clock was definitely a factor there, Bob. Now they've got a new 35 seconds to work with. GW continues that good one over UMass today. And they switch it to Larkio. Open for the shot. He won't miss too often when he's got that much time. He's a good standing shooter. And when you've got someone who shoots the ball as well as he does, you're going to have to get out to him and make him put the ball on the floor. That makes it a four-point game. Lowry trying to hook it down to De Silva. They are really going at it away from the ball. They just keep trading fouls. Well, post play today, anybody in the lane area, I don't know how the official decides who they're going to call a foul on. Watch these guys pushing and shoving on each other. Who's the foul on? They're both pushing. They could call a foul on either one, and I think we need to do something to clean that up, Bob. I'm much in favor of the wider lane that's used by the international teams. And that would clean up the post play. Gambling for the steal, Kaysen. And then he draws the foul on Chris Lowry. And that'll be two early ones on the senior point guard of SIU. It definitely appears that Illinois State has picked up the defensive intensity right now, Bob, and they are playing much harder. They're creating foul situations, and when you're not shooting the ball particularly well, one of the things you try to do is get to the free throw line. They're already in the one and one and get the chance to shoot some free throws now. Mike Vandegaard will check back in for Illinois State. Brian Kern with an interesting outing for a couple of minutes there. Three points, a rebound, and two fouls. You'd like your point guard to shoot a little better than 61% from the line. And Kaysen, with that in mind, missing the first. And you know, neither one of these teams shoots a, a great percentage from the free throw line. And particularly at this time of the year, those missed free throws can be big. Marcus Timmons shuffling the feet. And we'll have a timeout on the floor. Eight minutes and five seconds in. SIU off to a quick start, but Illinois State has been hanging around down by just four. ESPN's coverage of NCAA basketball is Sunday in February for you and coming up on Big Monday. Sponsored by Bud Light, Daniel Marshall, a streak. He has 23 straight games with 20 or more points. And UConn now getting in position for a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. At 9 o'clock, the ESPYs come your way Monday night. 
And then a little bit later, New Mexico State 19-3. DJ Jackson leads their balanced attack, heating up again for the NCAA tournament. Dick Monday coming up on ESPN. How about that? 8 of 11, Southern Illinois. Best shooting team in the Valley. Really sharp shooting so far. But they're only up by four. And you'd hate to think that you've got to continue to shoot that pace to maintain a four-point lead. Marky for Illinois State, looking for that right baseline. Paul Lusk cutting him off. Kaysen will penetrate. Shot clock down to three. Webb Hayner long with the three. And then it's Larkio over the top. That'll be his first. I'll tell you, we talk about the defense of Illinois State, but Southern Illinois is playing great defense as well. They're moving their feet. They're preventing the penetration. And, of course, that forces you to shoot from the perimeter, and they're getting good pressure on the perimeter shots. Lots of team fouls now early. Chad L. Tadonna, a junior backup guard for Illinois State, checks in. Pretty good guy on the perimeter as far as shooting. They give his own look on defense now. And Illinois State's playing the 2-3. They'll match up out of this. They'll try not to give any shots. But, of course, one thing you want to do when you're playing against the zone is continue to attack the basket. And Southern Illinois does a great job there. You see Chris Carr catching it at the high post and sticking it in the goal. With all that traffic, how did they complete that give and go? <laughs> Vandergaard on the right side. He's rejected by Timmons. Puts it on the floor again. And Marcus, who leads the Valley in rebounds at night again, has it. Good look. Down low, Brzezinski. And he's fouled by Vandergaard. One of the best things you can do against the zone is to get the ball up the floor quickly and take advantage of it before they can get players in position. And that's exactly what Chris Lowry did. Good look inside. I mean, he pushes it ahead. He's got Lusk in the corner. He looks to the corner, but inside to Brzezinski. And, of course, he's got great position. There's not much you can do there except foul. Well, that's what SIU would like to see out of this sophomore. A little more aggressiveness down low. He's a good athlete. Averaging only one rebound a game in a limited playing time. And Brzezinski shoots less than 50% from the free throw line, though, and that makes it hard to play him down the stretch. He is 30 of 51 from the floor. <laughs> Great percentage from the floor. Now a little three-quarter court trap here by Southern Illinois. It looks like they're back into a zone and continuing the traps at the half-court level. Al Tadana throwing the ball out of danger. Comes out on top to David Kaysen. Now they fall back into a 2-3 zone of their own. Who's going to shoot them out of it? That's a good start, even though it's not a three, as Kaysen has his first basket. Well, Kaysen was penetrating, looking to pass, and no one had picked him up, so he just went ahead and took the jumper himself. So he passed beyond the halfway mark of the first half with SIU up by five. So Lukey's beat the Redbirds by three in Carbondale back on the 8th of January. Ball sort of forced up there a bit, and the Redbirds are running. Kaysen penetrating, kicking for Altadonna, long with the three. They're only 6 of 19 from the field. Lusk on the hook. And now they've got a three-on-one. Litweiler, he'll take it all the way. And he'll spin it off the iron. SIU saving it with Lowry coming from out of bounds. Well, it looked like he did not establish position inside, or at least that's what the crowd felt. He can come back on the floor, but he's got to reestablish position before he touches the basketball. was tipped by Larkio, and then Carr kicked it out of bounds. But you see that first quick step by Carr, but a great job of reacting on defense by Illinois State. Home team, only three turnovers, but they're only shooting 30% from the floor. And there's a steal by Chris Carr with Lowry, and he couldn't get it back because Kaysen deflected. Litwiler saves it. Oh, great defensive play by David Kaysen. Here they come, four on three. The trailer, Larkio can't knock it down, but he does draw the foul. Well, good patience by Larkio to avoid the charge because Southern Illinois had good position inside there, good head fake, and he had a good crack at the basket. It just wouldn't go for him. 
What a great defensive play this is. David Kaysen anticipates the pass cross court, gets a hand on it. Good save on the sidelines. And Illinois State is off and running. Marchio with his third point of the afternoon. Good play by Larkio to go after the basketball there, but of course he ends up with the foul after the missed free throw. And how often do you see that happen? You miss a free throw and then you go after the ball, and now all of a sudden it's one and one down at the other end of the floor. Charles Barnes on the previous foul, and then Larkio picks up his second. And Paul Lusk will go to the line at the other end as Chad Altadonna checks out for Illinois State. Todd Wemhainer is back, and Lusk is having a big first half. He averages a team leading 16 a game, and in six of his last 13 games, he has scored 20 or more. And again, after the made free throw, the three-quarter court press, and continuing to trap the ball in the corner. Wemhainer, nice look down to Vandergaard. And once you get it out of the trap, of course, that defense is vulnerable because you have them outnumbered. And Michael Vandegaard with a good little half hook. Underneath, Carr. Larkio never saw the pass, and then Carr couldn't knock it down, but he is fouled. Well, Pavlovic just turned and threw that ball without even looking. He knew that Carr was there, and of course, Carr made a great catch. Look at this. I mean, there's no way. He's completely guarded. But Carr finds the open spot and comes up with it. And he was fouled by Todd Wemhater. That'll be his first. We saw this young man last year as a freshman, and he showed some flashes of this future potential, and this year he's having a very solid season. Double figures, eight of the last ten games. He shoots 80% from the free throw line. He's also developed a three-point shot. He's worked hard in the offseason, and it's paying off for him, as well as for Southern Illinois. That's three for Chris Carr. Southern leads it by six with just under eight minutes to go in the first half. Hitter. Plays a little pick and roll with Vandegaard. And he is fouled as he lets it go on the baseline. That'll be Paul Lusk with his first. Well, Lusk was trying to help out on the penetration by Vandegaard. Vandegaard's a too quick for Scott Brzezinski. So Lusk had to help out. He tried to body him to use his quickness against his size and the official call the foul. Marcus Patterson, the only SIU freshman, will check in. They usually come in in the first half. Get one of those guards a breather, and then sometimes you don't see him the rest of the game. These SIU guards, Lowry and Lusk, they can uh, get a little breather in the first half and then go all the way. And, of course, in a television game, you've got those extra timeouts to play with, and Rich Heron knows that. He's going to take advantage of it to keep his best players on the floor as many minutes as he can. Brzezinski almost shuffling the feet as he moved the ball across the key, and the turnover. Illinois State has it back, down by six with 7.44 to go, first half. Welcome back to Redbird Arena in Normal, Illinois, the home of the Illinois State Redbirds. They trail by six, have not shot the ball very well, but that's something that they haven't done much here anyway, but they seldom lose. And Kevin Stallings told us today, hope you don't get bored during the first half. We have been a slow starting team, but wait for the second half, and that's exactly what we're seeing today. I know he doesn't want that to happen, but that's certainly what seems to be happening again. Only 17 points so far. Overall, the Redbirds have won 14 straight here and 22 consecutive Missouri Valley games on this floor. And a guard down to the baseline and a strong move, too strong there by Scott Taylor. Patterson on the left wing for Carr. He will let it fly from anywhere and Chris has five. 
again, he's worked very hard on his outside shooting, and it's paying off. See, Southern Illinois is working hard to keep the ball out of Thomas Hunter's hands inside. They're conceding the shots on the perimeter. And there to pick up the loose ball is Hunter. Hasn't had the ball in his hands that much this afternoon, but he's hit two out of two. Uh, he's tough to keep off the boards, but when you're sagging off from the outside like they were, you should have been able to check him out. Timmons receives it after a tip on the left side. Lowry always looking to penetrate. There's a steal. Scott Taylor. Glenn Hayner right side will pull up. Well short. With good hustle, got his own rebound. Dumps it inside, and Hunter is three for three. Wow, if he gets the ball, Bob, he doesn't miss. He's got the little turnaround jumpers. He's very strong. He holds position well down low. And when he catches it, he's very effective and efficient with it. Closest Illinois State has been for a while. Patterson, nice pick and roll with Timmons. And he draws the foul in scoring. Both teams going to their strength now. Certainly Illinois State needed a basket badly. Hadn't had one for a while, except the offensive rebound. And both teams looking inside. Marcus Timmons, good position, and he just takes it to the basket strong, takes the bump, and you see him give that left hand and still maintain his balance and put it up with the right hand. Sort of like a running back giving you that limp leg. Each time he scored today, he's been fouled. That time he converts the three-point play. And Southern back up by six. Vandegaard into the paint. Good defense in there. He had to adjust the shot a little bit. And Marcus Timmons will distribute left side for Lowry. Pavlovich. Missing badly. Lust in traffic. Stuffed by Vandegaard. Tried to force it up there. And then he commits the foul. And that'll be his second. Well, Lust really couldn't do anything with it. He was trapped in the lane. And once that count begins, you've got to go ahead and put it up. He would have been called for three seconds had he tried to pass the ball off. Well, what a great rebound. He just rips it out of Vandegaard's hands. But again, now he's trapped under the basket. Not much to do with it. Good block by Vandegaard. And then, of course, Lusson trying to recover the ball, commits the foul. And that could be an important foul because he's very important to the Southern Illinois team. And a correction. That is his third personal. So even more so as Wenhater knocks it down for his first point. Maybe time to see Marcus Patterson again here. Well, it's interesting now that Illinois State does not press after what happened to them earlier when they pressed after the May free throw. They're going to stay with their straight man-to-man -man and try to claw their way back into this game. They try a trap on Pavlovich. He has the good vision for Carr. He came out of pressure and found Chris lurking on the right side of the paint. And it's tough to gamble on Southern Illinois at the full court level or the half court level. And at that time, they did a good job. They put the ball in the middle of the floor, and then they found Chris Carr on the baseline. Red Birch moving the ball all over. Vandegaard down and off the hands of Thomas Hunter. They must have had about 15 or 16 touches on that half-court effort. Never got the shot away. And if that reminds you of Kansas passing the ball around the perimeter, there's a good reason for that. Since Kevin Stallings spent five years at Kansas as an assistant coach to Roy Williams. Vandergaard on the steal there. And, of course, that was after six years at Purdue with Gene Cady. And Vandergaard just turns his back and says, I'll take it in the back wing. And he has seven. Well, that's the first shot we've seen Thomas Hunter miss, but he missed badly. He missed so badly that it didn't touch the rim or touch anything else. And that's a tough one to rebound as a defensive player. And Michael Vandegaard comes up with it. Timmons almost giving it up. Lowry back to him. And a return pass. Left side, Lusk. Short with it. Timmons off balance with the rebound. Lowry penetrates. Can't rattle it home. And Vandegaard will outlet. David Kaysen switching it for Barnes. Got Carr off the floor, goes all the way. And 
a good job of going to the charge. Mirko Pavlovich was there waiting for the charge. Barnes just slid right by him for the basket. Redbirds have it back to three with 3.40 to go before halftime. Entry pass down to Timmons, draws a triple team. And then we've got a Redbird over the back. It'll be Barnes. Well, they're playing Timmons physically down there. When he left the floor, they potted him about six feet out of the lane. He ended up coming down off balance and falling to the floor and saying, Mr. Official, that's got to be a foul. Bottom right of your screen, John Littweiler, 33, back for Illinois State. He gives a breather to Mike Vandegaard, who leaves with seven. Carr at the line for two. There have been a lot of fouls in this half, Bob, and you don't know who that will favor because both these teams need those starters on the floor as many minutes as possible. Are a good free throw shooter at 80%. Had a streak earlier this year when he had 18 in a row. Both of those, Rich Aaron Saluki's lead by five. Southern Illinois holds the lead at this particular point, but the inside defense of Illinois State has been outstanding, particularly when it goes inside to Marcus Timmons. Watch the reaction, and of course you see Mike Vandegaard bodying up under him, but Illinois State can't come up with the rebound. Chris Carr ended up at the free throw line on that particular possession. And he's on his way. Marcus Timmons, outstanding rebounder, about to become the fourth consecutive Saluki to lead the league in scoring. Now, Ashraf Amaya did it two years, so that would be five consecutive years that SIU's had the league's top rebound. That's an incredible statistic. Look at that backdoor look. A no-looker from Pavlovich. Down to Carr. Back to Pavlovich for the three. Strong rebound, Timmons. Now, that's how you lead the league right there. Oh, my goodness. You get those that are in your area and a couple that aren't even close to you. How did he reach that basketball and come up with it? At the other end, strong Tom Hunter. And that's eight for him. And that's good strategy to go right back to Thomas Hunter and go right at Marcus Timmons. If nothing else, you might get him into foul trouble. That's one way to stop him. Well, Timmons, no fouls yet. Are on top for Lusk. Clock running inside, two and a half minutes. Good look down to Timmons, and he almost missed the jam. And good patience, though, on the pass. Waited for the clear out. They cleared the whole side of the floor and threw over the top of the front. The defender was playing in front. Goodweiler on top for Kaysen. Clock inside, 15, still plenty of time. Barnes hanging, can't score. And Lowry will run as soon as he pulls down the rebound. And not able to reach that one was Marcus. He has skied his way to eight rebounds, but couldn't get up high enough for that one. Dan Debenham is in the studio for us today in our Delta Closet Halftime Report. Bob Knight hammered at Minnesota today. The Hoosiers were, too. It's not all him. Temple and Duke, a key non-conference game today as they position for the tournament. And an Olympic hockey shootout. That's all coming up in our Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Southern Illinois right now, again, really packing the lane area, almost conceding shots on the perimeter. Hayner can't hit from outside. And a rebound there for Chris Carr. Wemhainer, a good shooter for the home team, 0 for 4. And so Lowry at the other end answers with a 3, and that's 5 for him. And it's a 10-point Southern lead until that layup by David Kaysen. Well, a good move by Kaysen back against the grain, and Chris Lowry saying, I should have had that. I should have anticipated and done a better job of putting pressure on him. Under a minute to go, first half. Lowry 
Good look down to Timmons. Not quite high enough off the glass. Hunter will outlet. Kaysen wants to go all the way, and Lowry grabs him before he does. And that'll be three on Chris Lowry. And a good job by Illinois State. They're continuing to attack the basket, creating foul opportunities, and that definitely can take its toll on Southern Illinois. That is not what Rich Heron wanted before halftime. Paul Lusk picked up his with five and a half minutes to go. And now almost five minutes later, Lowry sits down with three. And number 12, David Keith. Greathouse, a junior guard who spells Lowry at the point, will step in. But their substitute guards do not play many minutes normally. It's just a quick breather and in back in the game for their starters normally. But in this case, with the three fouls, they're both going to have to sit for a while. Well, and the scouting report on them before the game, Coach, was that they never played those two together. They're both out there right now. Well, again, the, the action has forced that. And give Illinois State credit for continuing to attack the basket. Redhanger got the three. Marquio the rebound. Webhater finally hits one. And it's a four-point game in the last 30 seconds. Well, the last part of the half is always an important part, and Southern Illinois was dominating the last few minutes of the half, and then all of a sudden, a four-point turnaround. And Southern Illinois is having trouble getting the ball into good offensive position. There at midcourt with seven seconds left in the half, a foul on one hand, his second. Well, you want to put pressure in that particular situation with the clock running down, but you've got to make sure that you don't foul Marcus Timmons when he has no chance to score. Mirko Pavlovich, who had the big start to this ball game, will check out. Scott Brzezinski coming in. And at the line, Marcus Timmons, a 59% free throw shooter. With seven seconds left in the half, Southern Illinois certainly wants to keep Illinois State from getting a good shot here. They're going to pick up full court and try to make them use up some time, but they make the same mistake. They foul a player 90 feet from the basket, Bob, and now... David Kaysen has a chance to go to the free throw line and score two points. Now, it won't take till the locker room to get a talking to about that one. David Kaysen will step to the line at the other end. Had the good steals game against Indiana State, then followed that up with seven assists and four rebounds and Drake. He's a very good rebounding guard, but this free throw is a bit of a problem. Now Illinois State using a zone trap to try to prevent the advancing of the ball. First half coming to a close. Carr down the left sideline. He's got great range, but not enough to knock that one down. So it's Southern Illinois leading by five and a half. And Dan Debenham here in Normal, some uh, foul trouble looming for the visitors as we consider the second half later. Well, thanks, Bob, but we do have a great game going on at Redburn Arena. What else would we expect uh, with this intrastate rivalry? Coming up on the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report, hey, a look at the top 25. And coming up first, Temple and Duke, that right after this. But at the break, as we have said, a great game at Redburn Arena as Southern Illinois, Illinois State, five points separate them. game it is southern illinois up 41 36 take it away terry and bob pushed the ball last year but this year with some outstanding half-court players they're able to get it done in that manner as well bob carpenter and terry holland missouri valley on display this afternoon and we've seen a very well played tough ball game but a lot of fouls through the first half a lot of action bob i don't think there's any question about that both these teams go at each other very hard and i think the fouls may actually be to illinois state's advantage lusk and timmons the guys we talked about at the opening of the game today are the ones who can make the difference for rich heron
in that half-court offense. Well, again, you've got the great inside-outside combination, and that's what it takes to be able to attack defenses. The baskets have not come easy in this game, though. It's been very difficult to score. Both teams are very strong defensively. And as far as some of the highlights from the first half, it's those two we've been talking about. And uh, with a little help from the swing men on this play, Mirko Pavlovich, who had a very quick start today. Well, to get a basket, you almost have to hope the other team traps you. And in this case, what a great job of getting the ball to the middle of the floor by Pavlovich. And, of course, the man he finds inside, Marcus Timmons, knows what to do with it when he catches the ball down low. Well, Southern Illinois was on fire for a while. They hit eight of their first 11. They finish at 15 of 29. And it was Illinois State struggling early. They're only 14 of 36. They're holding their own on the rebounding boards. But uh, turnovers by the visitors have kept this a close game, even though they've had some dominant numbers in the first 20 minutes. And Southern Illinois, even though they're shooting 52%, most of this lead of five points comes at the free throw line. And again, Bob, you're exactly right. It's because of the turnovers. They've got 11 turnovers. Illinois State only has five. And by the way, that was a Saluki, in case you've been wondering. Redbirds with the basketball to start the second half. Kevin Stallings told us his team was a second-half team. We're going to find out now because they're down by five at home where they have not lost this year. Larkio left side, Hunter high off the glass, Vandegaard, check it, Larkio trying to keep the ball alive, and Chris Lowry will transition for SIU. Pavlovich, something about early in the half that gets him going. That's his first basket since we were about five minutes into the game. He was on fire to begin in the, at the beginning of the game, scoring against everybody who tried to guard him, and then you're right, he just disappeared. Webb Hayner swings it left side, and that will be a two. Marku Larkio out of Juvinka, Finland. He was towing the line, and he slid that win, that one in right off the iron, and it's back to a five-point game. And it's interesting, Southern Illinois is having Marcus Timmons bring the ball up court against defensive pressure. You don't see Lusk miss often when he's that open. Transition for the Redbirds, Kaysen. Nice entry for Hunter, and a reach in. That will be number one on Marcus Timmons, who had 11 points, eight rebounds, and an assist in the first half. Well, again, I think that's good strategy, even though he is not in foul trouble right now. If you can get another foul or two on him, he'll start to back off a little bit, and it'll take away from his ability to rebound the basketball, which is what he does so well. So attacking Timmons with your offense is a good idea. And then here's a guy who can rebound a little bit as well. Hunter had 11 boards in that first game at SIU. He's coming off a 17-point performance at Drake. And during that seven-game winning streak of the Redbirds, he's averaged 15 points and seven boards a game. He's into double figures. And it's back to three. Illinois State just hasn't been able to get it any closer than three. This is the third or fourth time they've had it back to that margin. Parr with a fake, penetrates, and drills it. Chris with a dozen. And Carr is so quick for a big guy. You know, he puts the ball on the floor, has the great first step, and the ability to stop and shoot the jumper as well makes him very difficult to guard. Mirko watching Marku defensively that time. Out to the wing, and Larkio as well, long with it. As Pavlovich went diving after him, now Lusk will give it in the middle for Lowry. On the left wing, Timmons. Pavlovich on the entry. Couldn't line drive it over the iron. Andergaard will outlet for Kaysen. They're sloughing off him a bit. Dumped down. Vandergaard, yes! 
just as the pass got there, he heard the whistle and took the ball up without ever bringing it down. Great offense inside. Vandergaard got himself open by setting the screen across the lane. And watch the inside play here. This is just excellent. He sets the screen and pins the defender behind him. And then as he feels the pressure, he gets it up on the glass and gets the roll. But he was really looking for the two free throws, as you said, Bob. Getting the basket was a bonus. Mike Vandergaard, second team all Valley last year. And he made the uh, first team all defensive squad a couple of years ago. Much celebrated player in this league. And his three point play makes it a two point game in the first two and a half minutes out of the locker room. Lost taken on. Ooh. About two different guys. Wim Hainer, the guy that he blew right by, and he has 10. That was great defense. Lust just made a very tough shot, and he created it by himself, as you said, Bob. Here's Larkio driving down the left side and dumping it for Hunter. And the turnover there. Stallings grew up in Collinsville, Illinois, played for the great Virgil Fletcher at that legendary program. That program is second in the country and wins all time to Centralia, Illinois. And Pavlovich gets open underneath and his pattern continues. That's a double figure day for him. Southern Illinois does a great job of taking away the backside help so that they can throw over the defender. And again, Illinois State does play in the passing lane, so they're vulnerable to that when you can move their backside help up to the high post. And that's exactly what Southern Illinois is doing to get those over-the-top passes. Now, you see them battling again down inside there. I don't know how you could call a foul on anybody there because they're both fouling each other. And that's Timmons with three very quick ones all here in the second half. Hunter can't hit that one. Far the rebound. Hunter should be able to score now because Timmons has to lay off him some. And I think Hunter found himself so open that time, he expected to be bumped as he has been every other time he shot the ball. Quick drive by Lowry and Case in the foul. That's only his first. So we've got three Il Southern Illinois players with three fouls. Timmons, Lusk, and Lowry. Ooh. Timmons, a good look. Pavlovich sort of deflected the ball to Lowry. That was just a great touch pass. And Lowry couldn't do much with it at 5'10 under the basket. Vandergaard watching Pavlovich. Off to the left with it, and a strong rebound for Thomas Hunter. And Kaysen with quick transition on the left side and a whistle. And when Kaysen is in the open court, he's almost impossible to stop. Pavlovich couldn't do anything at all to stay close to him. He barely could reach him to foul him. And our first time out of the second half comes four minutes and 13 seconds in. At the half, a five-point game. SIU leads it here by six. A lot of homegrown talent playing on these two basketball teams, but an international flavor as well. There's Mirko Pavlovich from Belgrade, Yugoslavia. He's got the better of the scoring today, doubling up on Marku Larkio from Huvinka, Finland. Marku played in the World University Games in Buffalo this past summer, and Mirko has played for the Yugoslavian Junior National Team in the past. And both do an excellent job of putting points on the board for their teams. They both average in double figures. Jason down the right side. Hunter up over Carr. And Thomas has a dozen. And it's back to a four-point game. Well, I would say that Illinois State is going to continue to go to Thomas Hunter now. They're going to try to create situations down there that are good for him. And then when the defense collapses, then they'll take the perimeter shot. Underneath, great look to Carr from Pavlovich. Pavlovich has made some excellent passes today. And, you know, something we should mention is that Marcus Timmons is in the top eight in the league and assist as a big man. So both of their big guys pass the ball extremely well. 
Yeah, he started the game with 85 assists. And Thomas Hunter's on fire again. Eight in the first half. He's added six more here in just over five minutes. And it's back to four. Lowry way out there. And that's eight for Chris. And, of course, that makes it very tough for Illinois State to stay in the zone defense. They'd like to change it up a little bit here and just try to take away the rhythm from Southern Illinois. But when Lowry can make the three-pointer from that deep, the defense has a tough time getting to him out of the zone. Marquio on top. Webhainer. And he's got two in a row after a slow start. And that's what Illinois State needs to do. They need to make some perimeter shots because, again, the defense for Southern Illinois will continue to tighten up inside to guard Thomas Hunter. Now they're going to come out a bit against Lowry, who thought about taking the three. Pavlovich switches it right in the press row. And Illinois State will have it back with a chance to get it back to two, maybe even one. Well, he makes some outstanding passes, but as we've said before, sometimes they surprise you. That time, Chris Carr could not anticipate that the pass was going to go out to the three-point line. He was headed to the basket. Kaysen looks back door for Vandegaard. He either didn't see it or Timmons had him blocked out. Well, a good job by the defense of reacting. And uh, what uh, they like to do, Illinois State would like to screen and create some opportunities inside against the zone rather than settling for just the taking the perimeter jumpers. Pavlovich, penetration, right side, Lusk. And he's got the three. And the two veteran guards of SIU are getting it done outside now. But how about the playmaking by Mirko Pavlovich? He drove the lane and drew the help, and that's why Paul Lusk was standing there by himself. Pavlovich, three assists on the day to go along with his 10 points. Vandegaard in traffic, under pressure, and Timmons clears it down. You know, Southern Illinois does put a lot of pressure on your defense because they can put the ball on the floor at all five spots and break your defense down. It's not just the point guard, Lowry, who breaks your defense down for them. Everybody can put it on the floor. Vandergaard takes it away from Timmons from behind. Ahead to Wendhater, all the way! Oh, Carr! He says, don't try that. Wow, what a spectacular block there. I thought that was Timmons, and I was afraid he was going to pick up his fourth foul. Carr just appeared out of nowhere. You'd like to keep the ball in bounds, though, Bob. You'd like to keep it in place so that your team has a chance to come up with it there. Glenn Hayner in the corner. Littweiler had Carr on his back. Oh, they're going to call the home team guy. Well, excellent offense by Illinois State that time. They overloaded the baseline. They had two players down on the backside of the floor, and then they floated a third player to the corner for the jumper. And it looked like they had good inside position for the offensive rebound. But the officials saw it differently. There was a lot of contact there. SIU now with a chance to pull away, maybe double figures. They lead by seven with 12 minutes to go. And there's Littweiler again. And as the Illinois State defense extends, it gives them good one-on-one -on -one opportunities at every spot. And as I said, all five Southern Illinois players can put the ball on the floor, and they can all post up as well. They've got good size at every spot, at least an even advantage. Pavlovich, great look in the car. And Wemhater had to foul him to stop it. Boy, these fouls are piling up like crazy. Illinois State trying to take advantage of the fact that they had five defenders on the floor against four offensive players trying to get into the passing lanes, and Chris Carr found the open lane to the basket. Standing free throw shooter is Chris Carr. Of Stallings Redbirds, 14 fouls already, three in a row. And 
it'll take more than a band waving instruments to keep that guy from hitting. 11.58 to go, and SIU moves it out by nine. Well, I think the biggest thing about the Missouri Valley is I think it's headed back to the prominence that it once had. Um, we have a number of outstanding young players in this league. There are some exceptional older kids in the league as well, but I think in terms of sheer numbers, if you look at the freshman and sophomore classes uh, of the different schools in this league, there are a number of outstanding players uh, in those classes, and, and I think that what that's going to mean for our league is it's going to uh, continue to get better and better, and I, I think we're going to continue to compete at a, at a higher level, maybe than we've been competing the last couple of years, but certainly uh, the future is very bright for our league, I think. Illinois State's been competing at a pretty high level the last couple of years. The Valley was great back in the 50s and 60s. Schools like St. Louis U, Drake, great names in this league. Here's Timmons off this deal. Lowry left side, and he can't hit it, but Timmons tips it around. SIU gets it back. Great entry to Carr. How did Paul Lusk see that one? Hard established position was begging for the basketball man there. Lost finally got it to him just at the right time. And then Thomas Hunter forcing one in at the other end. Seems like after every timeout, Illinois State goes right to Thomas Hunter. Do you think Kevin Stallings is saying, hey guys, let me introduce you to this young man right here? Hunter, 7 of 12 from the floor today. That miss from the right side. And then Timmons picks it up, and he has 13. Well, Illinois State's done a good job on their defensive boards today. They haven't given up many of those second shots to Marcus Timmons, but that one hurt because it increases that lead to double figures. Larkio with triple penetration. Wem Hayner, he's got a swish from the right side. That's 11 for him, and it's SIU by 8 with 10.20 to go. And what's happening, of course, is that Southern Illinois is reacting to throwing the ball inside to Thomas Hunter, and that leaves the perimeter open, and Wem Hayner is making them pay for it. Marco Larkio with his third foul. Four Redbirds on their way in. Barnes, Kern, 43. We also saw Chad Altadonna headed in, along with 21, Scott Taylor. Ian Stewart is back in there for SIU. They're doing some chasing and trapping now. Some gambling. Pavlovich can't hit it. The follow from Timmons wouldn't go. And in traffic, an SIU foul after a tough rebound by Brian Kern. Now, Kern hasn't played many minutes today, but as soon as he comes in there, something happens down low. Good job that time of trapping and then responding. And Kern just went up in the traffic and came down with the rebound. And that was an important rebound because Southern Illinois was all over the offensive glass. Pavlovich with his fourth foul. He'll have to sit down with 10 minutes and four seconds remaining. Good move by Southern Illinois to go to the zone here with a team of non-starters in the game for Illinois State. Force them to take a shot from the perimeter. Redbird shooting 43% today on 21 of 49. Litweiler a little too strong with that one. And Marcelo De Silva, a 7-foot-230 senior out of Rio de Janeiro, has the rebound. Musk for Stewart. Here comes Lowry weaving around. Great look. Timmons puts it away and a foul. Oh, that was an excellent pass by Chris Lowry. And again, in the trapping situation, he kept his dribble alive, which gave him a chance to look and see the floor. Even though he's small and can't see over the traps, by keeping his dribble alive, he got himself into good position to make that pass. This is just an excellent job. Look at him pull the defense and then make the nice dish inside to Marcus Timmons. Midweiler saves the loose ball. So at 9.05 to go, it's Southern Illinois by 10. 
Zalukis so trying to win their 20th game of the year. Timmons a touch, picked up by Stewart, and that looks like a charge at midcourt. Altadonna setting up. Did he give him enough room, Coach? Well, you don't have to give him room once he handles the basketball. But again, there's there's no advantage gain there. And the guy's really not playing defense. He's just standing there. I think that's the correct call as they ask him to call it today. But I think we should eliminate that. I think that should be a no call. Anytime a player's already gotten rid of the ball before he hits somebody, and particularly when the guy's really not playing defense, he's just standing there, you have a game of advantage. All he's doing is falling on the floor to draw the foul. Altadonna right side for Barnes. Stewart and Lowry with a double team. Altadonna right baseline, had to sky it to get it over the defense. Now Lusk leads a three on two. They'll wait for the secondary break and fire up the half-court offense. Well, neither one of these teams gives you an inch. They don't give you much room at all. You can get a perimeter jumper every now and then, or when a team traps, maybe you'll get an easy shot. But they don't come very easily. There they go again. Lowry with another three. And that moves it out to a 12-point Saluki advantage with just eight minutes to go. Timmons on the steal. He'll cut inside. Outside for Lusk. And we may have had a push-off by De Silva. That'll be his third. Great anticipation by Timmons at the other end. Altadonna was looking inside, looking inside. He telegraphed the pass, and Timmons caught it on the run. <coughs> and they couldn't take advantage, although they got a great shot for Paul Lusk. And you see Timmons' reaction there, and look at him handle the basketball in the open court. This is the leading rebounder in the Missouri Valley becoming a playmaker. And a good shot by Lusk, but definitely a foul on De Silva trying to get to the offensive boards. Chad Altadonna cannot hit it. Illinois State a 67% free throw team, but that's fallen a bit down to 63% in conference play. They look so confident passing the ball. Stewart with a fake, penetrates, kicks it for De Silva, triple team, so the seven-footer steps out and hits the jumper. And again, the big guys all seem to be able to do a little bit of everything for Southern Illinois. Ian Stewart putting the ball on the floor and creating the opportunity for De Silva. Kevin Stallings wants a timeout with 7-14 remaining, and his team on the verge of being blown out at home, down by 14. The visitors from Carbondale leading the home team here in Normal by 14 with 7-14 to go. One of the real pioneers for black head coaches in Division I is here today. That's Will Robinson. He was here in the early 70s and had players like All-American Doug Collins at the helm here. Honored at halftime, and they'll have a scholarship in his name at ISU. And that's certainly appropriate. Not only was he an outstanding coach, but what a gentleman. They also retired the baseball number of Dave Bergman, the Detroit Tiger, who wore number 12 when he played here. Pavlovich tumbling down on the rebound. And SIU and the Blues Brothers, all kinds of stuff ha happening here at halftime. It's been a great show, but they have not been able to put the ball in the basket. And Southern Illinois has played extremely well, particularly here on the road today. They're going after win number 20, and they know how important that is as far as their postseason aspirations are concerned. They are 19 and 6 overall, like Bradley and first place Tulsa. The Valley schedule wraps up tomorrow night. And the only two non-conference losses that Southern Illinois has are to Missouri, who's dominating the Big 8, and to St. Louis, who's having an outstanding season as well. Kaysen, a little short. Yeah, they'd be right there atop the Valley, but they lost twice to the Tulsa Ball Club of Tubby Smith in Carbondale and on the road. And time is starting to run down on the Redbirds, down by 14 with 6.20 to go. And an SIU opponent that looks very confident on the road right now. Well, the 
again, the thing that's so impressive about this team is that everybody on the floor can put the ball down and attack the basket with the dribble. Pavlovich off the side of the glass. Vandegaard battling De Silva. And that'll be four on Marcelo. And so that means they're going to have to bring Marcus Timmons back in the game. And that's certainly not good for Illinois State because Timmons, of course, is just truly an outstanding player at both ends of the floor. Well, unless he picks up a real quick one here, he ought to be okay. Playing with three fouls and only 6.04 remaining. At the line, Mike Vandegaard. Six minutes left. There's still plenty of time, but the clock is starting to become a factor. And Illinois State needs those free throws. They shot poorly from the free throw line in the game down at uh, Southern Illinois as well. Look at Timmons out there, handled the offense. That's really impressive. Brzezinski gets it back. He'll shoot from outside. Now that's not fair. Everybody on this team can shoot the three-pointer. The only guy that hasn't made one this year of the players who play regularly is Marcus Timmons. Brzezinski today makes a three. He's 7 of 15 from that range this year. Vandergaard, good look down. Hunter muscling his way in and fighting off a foul by Chris Carr. And, of course, a good move to take Marcus Timmons off of Thomas Hunter so he doesn't pick up the foul. Instead, it goes to Chris Carr. Hunter's a little bit too big for Chris Carr down there on that low post. Hunter at the line for two. Rich Heron and SIU trainer Ed Thompson wanted to ask us to say hello today to their student athletic trainer, Troy Tybrant, who's resting at St. Louis University Hospital. And we'd like to pass our along uh, our best wishes to Troy, who couldn't be with the team today, suffering from a serious illness, and we wish him our very best, as do the Salukis, his teammates from Carbondale. Vandergaard with a little hand check out there on Timmons. That'll be his second. Well, that's really tough. A big guy that can handle the ball as Timmons is handling it there. And Vandergaard trying to get the pressure on him, but ending up with the foul and putting him on the free throw line. Rich came out of the high school ranks many years ago after winning 616 games at Ocauville, Illinois, in Benton. He told me a funny story. His first SIU game at home, they played Chicago State. He was down by 18 in the second half, and he said most of the people in the stands were his friends. He decided right then and there to quit and go back to high school basketball. They came back and won the game, and he's been there ever since. Well, thank goodness they did, because he was an outstanding high school coach, highly respected in this area. I went by to recruit some of his players back during the old days when you used to come out here and drive in your car through Illinois and Indiana trying to find players. And he's been at it a long time, and he knows how to coach. Up by 17 in this one with 4.50 to go. Clem Hayner for Taylor. Illinois State's got to have something start happening from that arc. And Taylor swishes one. That's his first basket of the day. And it's 73-59 with four and a half remaining. Somebody has to get hot for Illinois State right now to get back in this game because, again, Southern Illinois is going to hang on to the basketball until they get to the free throw line or until you make a defensive mistake. And they're going to give you plenty of opportunities with each possession now to make a defensive mistake. Charles Barnes on the foul. Well, there's some tournament seedings at stake. Illinois State has the fourth spot pretty well locked up. Nothing Northern Iowa can do to catch him. But they were hoping to catch Bradley. Maybe win this one today and have Bradley lose at Creighton tomorrow. That would help out the Redbirds. Looks like Tulsa and Southern Illinois will have the top two spots. Webhater 
for three. Yes! And it goes in and a foul. That'll get you back in the game very quickly, Bob. And, of course, that's the kind of mistake you don't want to make. Paul Russ goes for the steal. That's what creates the scoring opportunity here. And in trying to recover, Brzezinski runs into Wimhainer. And a four-point opportunity to cut that lead down to 10. If he makes this one, they were down by 17 about a minute ago. The big three-pointer by Scott Taylor, and now a four-point play. That's seven points in the last two possessions for Illinois State. 4.05 to go. This one is not over yet. And nobody knows that better than Rich Heron, who saw Northern Iowa score 13 points in the last 42 seconds the other night. Still hung on to win by three. Well, it's tough to stray aggressive and still try to hang on to the basketball and stretch the defense, but that's what they've got to do. They've got to be ready to take it to the basket when the opportunity arises. Webhainer, the reach-in foul as Lowry was driving. Vandergaard on the block, which took place after the foul. And that's 10 team fouls. On the Redbird, so a couple at the line for Chris Lowry. And the thing about free throws at this stage of the game is once you start to miss them, sometimes it's hard to turn that around, even for the best free throw shooters on the team. So it's important, even though right now the lead is 10, that they start to make their free throws because Illinois State's going to put them there a lot for the rest of these three minutes and 47 seconds. That's how much time remains. And with those free throws, the Salukis go up by 12 after their 20th win of the year. I enjoyed. Uh, I got a lot of energy. I got enthusiasm for the game. Uh, I guess why I coach is I like to play the game, and when you can't play it anymore, you do the next thing best. You coach, and I still got a, a lot of energy left to play. Uh, and I, I don't know. I, I might go any place from uh, two to ten years, you know, as long as you have good health and you enjoy it, you can stay in. I, I'm not going to get out of it right away. That's for sure. And that was in response to a question I asked Rich about being 60 years old. How long does he want to keep on going? No signs of showing down, slowing down. It's only his ninth year. And there's a good pass down low. Scott Taylor sends it home. Back to 10. Others like uh, Mr. Holland got out a little sooner. Carr almost dragged that pivot foot. And a big day for Chris. He has 20. Well, what a program Rich Heron has built at Southern Illinois. If they win as many as 15 games next year, he told me that they would be the winningest team in Missouri Valley Conference history over a seven-year period. And that's fantastic because there have been some great programs in this conference. He has a winning percentage of 68 his last six years. Quick move from the left and another one for Scott Taylor. That gets it back to 10, but they can't get it any closer. And the clock winds down to 2.45. Bob, that's a good point. They have to stop Southern Illinois at this end of the floor. They can't just continue to trade baskets. Southern Illinois is perfectly happy to trade baskets and to keep the clock running at this stage. <laughs> this young man is going to be an outstanding player. He's only a sophomore, and on this very balanced team, they don't call on him to do all that much, but he shows you what he's capable of doing. Hunter First down to ball. Vandegaard, but he got underneath too much. And then uh, Illinois State with the foul on Vandergaard, and that'll be his third. And at this stage, Illinois State cannot afford to let the clock run, so they've got to foul at every opportunity, stop the clock, and just hope that Southern Illinois goes cold from the free throw line so they can make up some of this lead. Simmons can't get it down. SIU would be even better if that young man was in uniform. That senior guard, Tim Pace, busted up his knee after six games. He was one of those pure shooters out of Collinsville, Illinois, and they would be even deeper at that guard spot if they had Tim around. But unfortunately, his career is over after the knee injury his senior year. And he was averaging about 15 minutes a game coming off the bench in the first six games before he was injured. Timmons kicking that one out. 
And the Redbirds will have it back with a fresh 35. 2.02 to go. And they're down by 12. Southern Illinois going for the sweep of this series this year after winning earlier at home. Webhainer, and it's broken up by Timmons. He has been all over the floor today, fulfilling many different roles. But this is a nice touch by Kevin Stallings. He's got his seniors back on the floor here, giving them a chance to win or lose in their last home game, and give him a great deal of credit for style on that. That is, that's very nicely done. Saluki spreading the floor. Lust playing pick and roll with Pavlovich. Good anticipation by a Wemhainer to take it away. He'll kick it out on the wing. And it's a three by Charles Barnes and a timeout. With a minute 17 to go. SIU led by nine the other night in Northern Iowa with a minute to go. They've got a little extra time to play with here today. And also a special thank you today in 